Okay, let's go back to this ball fountain that we had. What I'd like to do is make a new kind of object um, where we click once. I'm holding the mouse button right now, but I want to be able to just click once and it will create something that's like an object that will just be continually creating new ball objects all the time. So it's like I click here once and I want it to be doing this. But if I clicked here once, it would be doing that same thing, but from over here. So it's like I'm sort of placing a fountain. All right, how are we going to do that? Um, let's start this way. Um, we're actually going to start with a simplification of the fountain that we already have. So right now inside draw, um, we tell the ball object to move itself, but the fountain class is responsible for drawing the ball. I'm going to go ahead and cut these two lines that are responsible for drawing the ball. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to say b.draw and that would have the ball draw itself as well. So that way we just say, I'm looping through the whole ball list, I'm getting a ball out, it's gonna draw itself and then move itself and then check if it's dead. Um, all right, so let's do this. If you hover over it, you can actually tell it create the draw method inside the ball class. And so if you click that, now I'm over here in the ball class and I've got public void draw. If I try and paste those two lines of code in that draw the ball, um, I've got to make a couple of changes. First of all, I don't want to say b.ballColor because when we were in fountain, ball color was a variable inside a ball object, which we'd named b. Here, we're inside a ball object already. We already have a ball color variable up here as a field. So I can just say fill in the ball color that we already are and then draw it where our own xy coordinates are with our own diameter. Okay, so far so good. Um, the problem here is it doesn't know what fill and ellipse are because these are both commands that only a graphics window can run. And back here in fountain, when we said extends p applet, that means that fountain is a graphics window and that gives us the ability to use those commands. Um, something students sometimes do is they would want to try and say ball extends p applet. Um, and if we do that, you'll see that now I'm able to use, uh, there we go, that now I'm able to use these two methods just fine. Um, this does remove the red underlining. However, this is a completely insane thing to want to do. Um, here's why. You're saying that every single ball is itself a graphics window. That's crazy. We only want one graphics window in our whole program, and that graphics window is fountain. So we don't want to make each ball object be its own graphics window. Instead, what we want to do is we'll have the draw command take a graphics window as input. So p applet window. And the idea is, and then I got to import that. And the idea here is when fountain tells the ball to draw itself, we're going to give the ball object the graphics window that we want it to draw itself onto. So because fountain itself is a graphics window, we're going to use the keyword this. The keyword this wraps up the executing object, which in this case is fountain. So we're taking fountain, which is really a graphics window, and we're saying we're going to give ourselves to the draw method inside ball. And now that's going to get assigned to window. And so then we can say window.fill. So we're asking the graphics window to set its fill color. And then we're asking the graphics window to draw an ellipse right where the ball is. So this is a better solution to our problem. Um, and if we run it now, cool, it's still working. All right, so let's proceed to this issue of we want to be able to click and make a single object that just continually creates these ball objects. All right, I'm going to call this class um, particle fountain. <coughs> and let's think about what facts describe a particle fountain. Um, a particle fountain is supposed to be in charge of creating and drawing all those ball objects. So I think I want it to have a lot of this code here already. I definitely want it to have an array list of ball objects. So I'm going to cut that from fountain and paste it in particle fountain. And what else do I want it to do? Well, let's, let's go ahead and create the constructor first. So public 
particle fountain. I'm just gonna have it be an empty constructor for the moment. I'll create the ball list. I want to have a run method in particle fountain. And what the run method is going to do is it's going to create a new ball object and loop through all existing ball objects and draw them and update them. So this is sort of doing the same job as um, fountain was before. So in that case, let's just copy and paste all the stuff that used to be happening in fountain. So uh, we're already doing this, because this is creating the ball list. But now the ball list is going to be inside our particle fountain object. So here I'll say particle fountain, fountain. And then I'll say particle fountain, oops, sorry. I want to say fountain equals new particle fountain. So again, I'm doing the same things I used to be doing. It's just that I'm encapsulating them inside this new class. And the reason we want to do that, of course, is because we might want to have several different particle fountains. All right, what's going on inside draw? Inside draw, we have this mouse pressed stuff. This was all about creating a new ball object, right? So let's cut all that stuff that was inside mouse pressed and we'll create a method inside particle fountain for doing that. I'm going to call it public void uh, add particle. And I'm going to paste it in there. Um, and so far, this looks like it's going great, except for here, it doesn't know what color is. So let's do this. Let's give our particle fountain the graphics window right at the very start when we create it. So in the constructor, we'll make a p applet called window. Here is a field. We'll have a p applet called window. We got to import window, and now we'll say this dot window equals window. And now, whenever we want one, we'll have the graphics window that we can use to ask graphics window questions. Um, because this color command, remember, that's a graphics window command. So now that I have a window, I can say window.color, and now that problem's fixed because I can ask the graphics window to make the new color for me. And now I've got the new color. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, so far, so good. Whenever I run the add particle method now, it will create a new ball where we want it to be created and add it to the ball list. All right, let's go back to fountain. Here inside fountain, uh, here this is looping through all of the balls in the ball list, and it's getting each one out, and it's telling it to draw itself and move itself and check if it's dead. So this is all the stuff that I want my particle fountain to be in charge of. So I'm going to just delete all that stuff, and I'm going to put it inside my particle fountain's run method. And so far, it's all going well, except for this draw method. It doesn't. I'm trying to pass this, and when I was inside Fountain, this was a graphics window, a p-applet, but now the keyword this is referring to Particle Fountain, which is not a graphics window. Um, but remember, we gave it a graphics window. It's called window. So instead of handing the draw command a Particle Fountain, we'll hand it the graphics window because the draw method needs a graphics window in order for the ball to be able to draw an ellipse on the graphics window where that ball is. OK, so let's just condense these. So really, our particle fountain is pretty simple. It's just got a run method and an add particle method. So back here in fountain, <coughs> um, this is complaining because I have to give it a graphics window as an input to the constructor. And remember, the keyword this means the current object, and the current object is a graphics window. So now inside the draw, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say fountain.run. When I run it, this should do exactly nothing, because I haven't told the particle fountain to create new ball objects. But what I could do is I could say uh, fountain.addParticle, and then run. 
So every single loop, I'm creating a new particle, and I'm telling my fountain to do all that, uh, to maintain all the existing particles. So there we go. I don't even have to hold the mouse down now. It's just, it's just running this particle fountain. That's it. Um, right now, I don't have a good way to have the particle fountains be located in different places, though. So let's do that. Here I am back at particle fountain. I'm going to give my particle fountain an xy coordinate. So that means here inside the constructor, uh, I think we'll take those xy coordinates as inputs. And I'll say this dot x is x and this dot y is y. So now that our particle fountain has a home that it lives at, whenever I add a particle, I don't want to add the particle at, at Sorry, I don't want to add the ball object at 300, 550. I want to have the ball object get created right where my fountain lives at xy. So here, I'm going to use xy as the location where I'm creating the ball object. Um, do I need to change anything else? No, this looks OK. All right. So now that I've got that, let's go back to fountain. It's, create, it's complaining because I changed the constructor. So now, uh, when I construct the fountain, I need to give it some coordinates. So I'm going to give it the coordinates of, let's give it, let's give it 100, 500. And now when I run it, there's a particle fountain at 100, 500. But if I wanted to, I could, I'm going to rename this just to F. Remember, I hit Alt-Shift-R to do that. I'm going to create a second particle fountain, F2. And F2, I'm going to locate at uh, 500, 500. And I'm going to tell F2 to do all that same stuff. Add a particle and run itself. So now when I run it, now I've got two particle fountains side by side. That's kind of nice. 